Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the podcast The Endurance of Labor Laws. I am your lovely host, Leslie Sullivan. And today or tonight is episode 140. And today we're going to take a look at the National Air Traffic Controllers Association. We have talked about the strike in regards to the air traffic controllers. I think this occurred in 1981. We discussed that a little bit, but we have not discussed specifically the National Air Traffic Controllers Association. So I thought we would go ahead and go over that because it is a labor union, a trade union within the United States. So that is good. So let's take a look at this. But first of all, let me give a big shout out to my listeners because as usual, you guys are awesome. I love to see you here online. So a big shout out to Nevada, Minnesota, North Carolina, Washington, Pennsylvania, California, Oregon, Virginia, New York, Texas, and Oklahoma in terms of countries, the United States and the Russian Federation. Good to see you guys. Okay, so just a little bit of facts about the National Air Traffic Controllers Association, also known as NATCA. It was founded in 1987. So, it doesn't go back a long ways, but it's just one that kind of got um renamed, so to speak. It is headquartered in Washington DC. A little bit of concern there because Washington DC is not exactly known for um being diplomatic or I would say fair in terms of politics because Washington DC can be pretty corrupt unfortunately. It hasn't always been that way, but there are some groups there that control different avenues of politics within our nation's capital, which is why President Trump and other presidents as well, not just Republican presidents, but there have been Democratic presidents as well um that have tried to drain the swamp as they say. And you know what the more corruption that is there the more difficult it can be to drain the swamp but it's not impossible but needless to say this particular association is located in our nation's capital which is Washington DC they only have one location so this is truly an american labor union and trade union it is only located in the united states however they do have ties with an international union in regards to air traffic controllers That concerns me there with that because pretty much all these other countries that have these labor unions are socialist. And so that's why some of these labor unions or most of them that are labor unions and trade unions within the United States, especially when they have an association with an international labor union or trade union, they tend to be fascist or socialist just because it's not democratic. It's not American. It's something from outside the United States trying to get into the United States, which is why I get concerned with stuff like this. Um, the Air Traffic Controllers Association has 15,000 members. Um, their president right now is Rich Santa, and the executive vice president or VP is Andrew Labravage, if that's how you pronounce his last name. And they have affiliations with the AFL, CIO, and the IFATCA. So let's dive into this puppy just a little bit further, and this isn't going to be a super long one, so it should be fairly short and sweet. It says the National Air Traffic Controllers Association, also known as NATCA, is a labor union in the United States. It is affiliated with AFL-CIO and is the exclusive bargaining representative for air traffic controllers employed by the Federal Aviation Administration, also known as the FAA. Now, FYI. These are federal employees, air traffic controllers, which is why back in 1981 when they went on strike, President Reagan could fire all of them and threaten to do so unless they went back to work because they are federal employees and they had grounded all basically all air traffic within the United States when they went on strike. And they cannot do that because they are federal employees, which means they report to the federal government. So it's not the same as a private sector company that just happens to have employees that belong to a labor union within the private sector this is federally governed so when you're dealing with the federal government you can't just up and walk out and expect get paid and it also directly impact the United States also when they went on strike back in the day in the early 80s They also kind of not only did they punish the American people for what they wanted, but they also interfered with pilots 
and air flight attendants having a job and receiving wages. See, that's one reason why labor unions and trade unions do not get along with each other. It's because sometimes they sabotage other people's employment and their paychecks for the sake of their bargaining agreement. See, that's one of the biggest problems with labor unions and trade unions in the United States as well as in other countries that have these is that they don't care who they hurt. Because they make it seem like their their job and their wages are more important than everybody else's when it is not. That is not equality. That's not equal opportunity, that's not equal employment. Unfortunately, with these labor unions and trade unions, they get kind of militant, which um the air traffic controllers in the 80s, they did get militant and they completely walked out on their jobs. And that's why President Ronald Reagan said, "Hey, you either get back to work or you're all fired, and we will find people to to replace your jobs." So, you either get back to work or you you lose it. So, what's it going to be? That's one of those things that You know, if they really wanted help with their wages and their work environment or their benefits, you don't walk out on the job. You don't ground every plane in the United States with something like that. See, an air traffic controller's job is very important. I acknowledge that. I mean, they are awesome people to have. They do a tremendous amount of work under a tremendous amount of stress. But that does not give them the right to just up and walk out and act like you know that we are below them the american people when technically they are working for the american people because our tax dollars our federal tax dollars are paying their wages so a federal job is completely different than a private sector job so just fyi be aware of that so this association also represents a range of workers related to the air traffic control also known as the atc industry and the faa itself NATCA was certified on June 19th, 1987 and was formed to replace the Professional Air Traffic Controllers Organization, also known as PATCO, which had been decertified following the well-known 1981 air traffic controller strike. That's the one that we just discussed that they behaved very poorly in regards to that. NATCA promised to never condone an illegal strike but does actively pressure Congress and the FAA to hire more controllers and to accelerate the installation of advanced air traffic control systems. Here's the thing. If they need more controllers then they just need to hire them. There shouldn't be a employee uh deficiency here they they should be able to hire people there are plenty of people that want to do this job but what we will find out a little bit later is why they're having a hard time finding people and it's because they have problems within the organization and they also have problems in the workplace and because they're not handling those two things they have a very hard time hiring people that will stay at the job and they have a hard time keeping people they have a hard time finding people and keeping people that is a reflection of the organization itself not the actual industry per se the industry is going to be stressful just due to the nature of the job it's no different than a emergency room doctor of course it's going to be a more stressful job than just like a regular gp but that doesn't mean that that the workplace should be stressful or negative unfortunately within the air traffic controller realm of things in terms of this industry it's unnecessarily stressful and it's almost run like a bureaucracy because it is under the federal government but also their associations and their labor unions and trade unions very much operate like bureaucrats which is not a compliment to anyone that gets called that it means that they are not running it well and they don't care to do what's right that's why they are consistently having problems uh issue number 2 here is that Regardless of what's going on in their union, they should have immediate access to the best kind of advanced air traffic control systems. Technology has nothing to do with whether or not an employee is in a labor union or not. Technology and what you use at the job has to deal with your actual workplace. It has nothing to do with your wages, it has nothing to do with your benefits. It has nothing to do with your sick leave. It's just part of the job. Like the equipment should already be there. 
So obviously, this is a reflection of poor management within the federal government, within the air traffic control industry, and within these labor unions and trade unions. This is a big issue, and it shouldn't be, because technology is basic when it comes to things like this. It's just basic. I mean, it'd be like if you rented an apartment and you're supposed to have a refrigerator, but because there's a tiff going on between the landlord and like a real estate agent, I'm making this up, you're not going to get a refrigerator. Well, that's stupid. The the appliances in the apartment in this analogy should just be in the apartment. Whether or not a tenant has access to appliances should not be determined on any kind of tiffs that the landlord is having with the state or county or with a real estate agent. I hope that makes sense because that's just an analogy. I'm not saying that that actually occurs, but I'm just saying that when something is basic, it should already be there. It shouldn't be part of the problem. But because of mismanagement and bad management and bad managers and poor decision making, things as you know Issues like this, something as simple as technology has been um not taken care of and that leads to or actually that is a cause of the stupidity. So, an issue with that. It says under the Federal Aviation Reauthorization Act of 1996, NATCA's ability to bargain collectively with the FAA for wages and personnel matters were uh, was codified. Internationally, the NATCA is affiliated with the International Federation of Air Traffic Controllers Association. Now, mind you, I do not agree with international anything with this. Associations, labor unions, trade unions because we are the United States. We don't need anybody's help. We are a, a capitalistic country. We have democracy, we have freedom. No other country on the face of the earth operates the same way that the United States does. So why are we aligning ourselves with any other country in any way shape or form? It just makes no sense. It makes sense if you're trying to degrade your country and trying to get it to be socialist. But if you don't want socialism and if you don't want fascism, then do not align yourself with international entities like this. It makes no sense. Also whenever you align yourself with an international association it can actually lead to destabilization of your currency and of your economy because socialists they don't value money they love money there's a difference when you value something you take care of it you don't steal it or misplace it when you love money you typically steal it or misplace it and you don't value it Socialists love money and they love other people's money. That's why these international associations and labor unions cannot truly be trusted because they typically are socialist. And the United States is not socialist. We unfortunately have socialists that live here and try and ruin it for everybody else, but thank goodness we still have the constitution of the United States. Because without it, we wouldn't have a country. And then we would not have legal rights of any kind. So just be aware of that. Goes on to say NATCA was involved in contentious negotiations with the FAA in 2005 and 2006 under the Bush administration. So obviously the person that wrote this is trying to take a cut at the Bush administration. Probably not a Republican that wrote this article. When the parties could not reach an agreement on a new contract, the FAA chose to follow the process enacted by Congress. and unilaterally implemented new terms and conditions of employment. NATCA filed unfair labor practice charges asserting that the FAA negotiated in bad faith. That could be possible. Then again, who knows? I mean, you can't always trust a labor union, but it is possible that they did not negotiate correctly, but I don't think we'll ever really know because when have you ever heard of a labor union or a trade union being completely honest? It's very rare. It's very rare. They're they're usually Socialists are fascists and they like to cover things up. That's for sure. And or give to the Democratic Party and affect elections or the outcome of elections. So I kind of have to go, wow, this is probably shady. But, you know, it is possible that there was something done in bad faith. Who knows? We'll we'll never know. 
Um, let's see here. It says the General Council of the, of the Federal Labor Relations Authority, also known as FLRA, a political appoint, appointee, um, use their prosecu- basically their prosecution um, abilities uh, to, to dismiss all charges filed by NATCA. The United States Court of Appeals, District of Columbia Circuit, affirmed uh, the prosecution's discretion to dismiss the charges. So it did go to court, but it failed, so probably for good reason. We're going to skip down to current issues, which this isn't really current because this is kind of outdated considering the year that we are in and then the year that this article is talking about kind of jumps around a little bit. But it says in regards to the FAA reauthorization bill, It says on September 3, 2006, the FAA ceased negotiations with NATCA officials and imposed terms and conditions of employment on air traffic controllers nationwide. Now, it may sound bad, but it's really not. And here is why. Air traffic controllers are federal employees. So, basically, if you're going to impose something on one employee when they are federal, then you have to impose it on all of them because they are pretty much all federal employees that report to the same entity which is the federal government this is not the same as the private sector so this is completely different these new terms which include a 30% pay cut for new controllers and the freezing of current air traffic controller salaries as well as a sharp change in the working conditions had a huge impact on the air traffic controllers here's the thing it doesn't tell me what their pay is or was so if they're if they're having pay cuts i wonder if they were being paid too much because these are labor unions this is a trade union if it's anything like some of these other these other labor unions their their employees are typically way overpaid sometimes by as much as $100,000 overpaid per employee which is ridiculous i don't know what they get paid but i if i had to guess it's probably not comparable to a normal job in the private sector so that's an issue there So, and here's another thing. If they're getting paid really good money, then they have no excuse to not show up to their job. Because now, federal jobs and state jobs tend to be the cream of the crop. So they really have no excuse to complain or not show up to work. Because if they're typically getting paid better than the private sector, which hasn't always been that way, but if they are getting paid better than people in the private sector, then, then they really have no reason to complain. Unless it's health and safety and things of that nature. But anything outside of that, I think they need to suck it up. It says union officials point to these changes to explain the drastic drop in the numbers of veteran air traffic controllers staying past their eligible retirement age, causing an insufficient staffing issue along with a very bottom-heavy, inexperienced demographic structure of the controllers. Here's the thing. Just because someone is young doesn't mean that they don't know how to do the job. When someone is trained, they're trained. they need to be given an opportunity to do the job and do it well what i suspect has been happening which this happens a lot in labor union jobs and workforces is that it's very difficult to get rid of retired people because they want to stay on and make that really good money and then just get all these benefits on top of it that they don't really deserve anymore and i don't mean that harshly it's that they they don't want to they don't want to hang up the towel as they say they they are of retirement age but but they don't want to leave well how are younger people and newer people ever supposed to take over that job and do it well and learn the ropes if the people that are that are repat, that are past retirement age will not leave we have that problem here in Oklahoma in regards to retired cops i don't agree with this but this happens quite a bit where we will have retired cops that instead of completely retiring they'll go work for another uh, police agency or police force or maybe work as a sheriff or something and they're old and beyond you know what would be considered a normal age for that type of job i've seen guys that are in their 80s that are carrying guns and have a badge and they they're on the clock earning a living and they can't chase after anybody They can't arrest somebody. I don't even know if they can see to shoot. How is that appropriate? It needs to be appropriate for the job. But it's not always like that. I suspect that same issue is happening within the air traffic controllers and that's why they they can't seem to recruit the right people and they can't keep the right people. 
So there is a hierarchy issue within the air traffic controller industry, within their association, within their labor unions, within their trade unions, and within the federal government, because it is technically the federal government that is hiring and firing these people. Obviously, they're not firing people, and they're not, they're not, you know, encouraging or enforcing people to retire. So just FYI, be aware of that. Like, you know, we need to learn to read between the lines on this. Because someone that doesn't understand about people staying on past their retirement, they may not understand that that is actually crippling our country. And it's making it very difficult for young people or younger people, even in their 30s and 40s, to get good paying jobs that can't support themselves and or their families. The good jobs are out there. It's just you have the older generation, sometimes from the baby, baby boomer generation, they're staying too long in the job. And they're not passing the hockey puck to the younger generation because they want the money. That is greed. It's as I've said in times past, greed is not just in Wall Street. It's in all these other places that people don't ever think to look. That is the issue. And it, and it directly impacts the labor force. It affects our currency. And it also affects our labor laws. Because with things like this, it's like young people can't get a fair shake. Well, if they can't get a fair shake, how can they get a good job? Whose fault is that? If they're honestly and earnestly trying to find employment, but they can't find it, whose fault is that? It's not the person's fault that's actually trying to find work. So just be aware of that. Not all people are like that TikToker moron that we talked about in a previous podcast. Not everybody is like him that is around that age. But they get put into that same demographic in terms of the mindset, and they're not all like that. It's just like not all baby boomers are greedy. A lot of them do retire, but the ones that don't retire, they have a problem with greed. And it's just sickening to me because... You know, they have children and grandchildren that are trying to find employment. And here they are still getting a paycheck. And then they may or may not complain about their Medicare or Medicaid or their Social Security. It's like, well, why don't you actually give young people a chance to earn a living? See, what's so dumb about these baby boomers that won't retire, and I'm not anti-baby boomer, but this is the age bracket that is staying in these jobs and they shouldn't be. What they don't realize is that the reason why... There's not enough money. Well, there's a, there are multiple reasons why for this, but the re, one of the reasons why there's not enough money for Medicare or Medicaid is because young people are not able to find the jobs that they need. Well, the reason why they're not able to find the jobs that they need, one reason is because some people won't hang up the towel. They won't hang up the hat. They won't retire. They refuse because they have a problem with greed. That's an issue. So just FYI, be aware of that. goes on to say the originally introduced reauthorization bill would have forced the FAA back into, into negotiations with the NATCA and include a 15-month limit to the bargaining, followed by arbitration if no consensus is reached. The union hopes that these negotiations will alleviate the staffing insufficiencies. It will not. The increasing amount of delays probably won't. and help modernize the air traffic control technology. See, here's one of the problems with these labor units and trade unions. And it's really dumb that they do this. They lump all this stuff together to take it to the bargaining table to get a better contract, but yet they're making everybody else suffer. Here's the thing. Their staffing insufficiencies has nothing to do with their labor union in terms of this. Just hire the right people. Just hire them. It's not that hard. You probably have an HR department. Let them do their job. In regards to modernizing the air traffic control technology, that should have already been happening way before a bargaining agreement you know, gets to the table or, or before it comes to pass. Air traffic control technology has nothing to do with staffing insufficiencies or employees' pay. So then why is this labor union or association lumping all this together and putting it in, in, in connection with negotiations? They're doing it because they're crying wolf. They're doing it to make it seem like they have a harder job 
than they already have. Yes, they have a hard job. Yes, we get that. But they're actually shooting themselves in the foot by not handling this stuff when it actually takes place. They're sitting on the problems and the issues and waiting until they need to have a contract and then dumping all this stuff that they don't like, which I can see why they don't like it. But this stuff could have been handled way before they got to the bargaining table. But they're using these problems as a weapon, which is not very smart. Because in this particular type of job with an air traffic controller, why would anybody in that industry or job wait on receiving air traffic control technology when you can have it right away? Like you're putting yourself at risk, you're putting the passenger safety at risk, you're putting the pilots and the flight attendant safety at risk. Why are they doing that? It's because of money. I would actually be more impressed with this labor union or association if they had already handled this stuff before they got to negotiations. But they refused to do it. Because they want to look like they're getting cheated. The only person or persons that's getting cheated is the American people. We are being cheated on proper deadlines for flights and also safety. This is why the air traffic controllers were threatened to be fired by President Ronald Reagan. He he knew what was going on. He knew what they were trying to pull. And he wasn't going to put up with it. And as president of the United States, he had every right to do that. Because he was not going to be fooled by these people. Here they are crying wolf, but they're not even doing their job and they're not even doing it well. Like they're not handling problems when they actually happen. They're letting them mount up and snowball. I mean, to the point where it becomes an avalanche. Well, is that very good management? No. Is that good timekeeping skills? No. Is that good human resources? No. It's it's pathetic. It's horrible. It's not smart at all. But yet they do this to try and get more money. Well, that tells me they have a problem with greed. They probably need to do an audit, an internal and external audit. Because if it's obvious to me that they already have a problem with greed, then they probably have got some issues on the inside that they don't want people to know about. Why else would they pull this stuff? See, as taxpayers of the United States, we have every right to call people out on stuff like this because it deals with our tax dollars first of all, and more importantly, it deals with our safety. It technically deals with everyone's safety that that flies into or out of the United States, which not only includes national flights but international flights. Flights from other countries. Don't they deserve to know that that we have the best technology possible and that the air traffic controllers you know should not and cannot have control over all this stuff and shortchange people on safety just because they're throwing a hissy fit I mean don't our pilots and flight attendants deserve the best possible equipment for the air traffic controllers so that way they they can be safe and their passengers can be safe and later on we will see I think it's the NATSB what yeah the NTSB they kind of call these people out on this because it is a safety issue. And the NTSB is the National Transportation Safety Board. In case you're wondering who they are, if you've ever watched a May Day episode or why planes crash, these are the people that get called in to a plane crash so they can investigate what happened. and they basically do what they can to put the plane back together they get the black box and they figure out what caused planes to crash even these people are concerned about their traffic controllers and the disconnect between them the federal government and the american people because there is a disconnect and there's no excuse for it safety comes first safety is more important than currency it just is just due to the nature of the job i would think that would be obvious goes on to say by the time the reauthorization passed after 23 short term extensions so obviously they're throwing a hissy fit so who knows how long those extensions lasted the parties were already 2 years into a new 3 year contract negotiated in 2009 
The new law provides for mediation and binding interest arbitration in the event the parties do not reach agreement in future contract negotiations, ensuring that there are never um, imposed terms and conditions of employment ever again. Good luck with that. Here's the thing. Air traffic controllers are not an independent company. They belong to the United States because they are under the branch of the federal government. So technically their jobs don't belong to them. Their jobs belong to the federal government which is you and me, the American people. See, that's why public sector jobs are different than private sector jobs. They are completely separate. Completely separate. And it talks a little bit about their staffing crisis. It says as of January 2008, the FAA documented about 11,000 air traffic controllers which is the lowest number since the 1981 PATCO strike. Well, then hire more people. Fix the bureaucracy problems within your organization. Then maybe you might be able to hire more people, recruit more people, and keep more people. But if you don't handle the issue, you're probably still going to have issues. That's just how it goes. I would think it would be obvious. The union's position is that this staff shortage relates directly to the 2006 imposed FAA regulations. There are even low numbers at busy facilities such as Atlanta, Chicago, New York, Dallas, and Southern California, which generally offer a larger salary for controllers. The union feels that this is a very serious safety concern. I would say duh, as it keeps facilities understaffed. However, in regards to the FAA's position on the suggested safety issue, Hank Krokowski, if that's how you pronounce his name, um then FAA chief of operations so this is past tense said there's nothing that we're seeing at this point in time that gives us any concern that's concerning he would make that kind of statement see this is the thing when you have powers that be upper management that don't even want to acknowledge what's going on they need to be fired which is probably why he's probably not there anymore because it says past tense FAA chief of operations so just be aware of that the belief of the FAA is that the staff shortage affects flight delays more than anything else. I don't know about that. And even this is not in significant proportions. In order to maintain or increase the number of air traffic controllers, the FAA is hiring hundreds of trainees and offering cash bonuses to veteran controllers to entice them to stay beyond their retirement date. But numbers remain low. Here's the thing. People, if they are of retirement age, they need to retire. And here's the thing. Trainees, you know, I think this makes it seem like they're bad and incompetent. They're they're educated at their job. Just because someone is new doesn't mean that they don't know what they're doing. I think the number one thing that frustrates younger people is when they're educated, they're trained, but yet they're not given a chance to do their job and do it well because of their age, because they're younger. That is age discrimination. If it's wrong to discriminate against someone because they're over the age of 55, then it's wrong to discriminate against someone who is under the age of 55, particularly in their teens or not their teens, their 20s and their 30s. You know, people that go to air traffic control school or that kind of training, they're not morons and they're not idiots. They have a desire to do the job. They went to school for it. they should be given the opportunity to do their job and do it well but they're not being given that opportunity why because of the federal government the FAA and these labor unions and trade unions it is an issue like like they're not communicating with each other it's just like these federal agencies you know before the EPA um was put together by president richard nixon you had all these different federal agencies that were supposedly investigating all these super fun sites or these environmental catastrophes but they weren't talking to each other because they were being competitive it's not appropriate to be competitive in a federal agency because you're dealing with public safety it's ridiculous but but that's the that's the stupidity and basically the infrastructure of so many federal agencies They act like frat houses. I mean, Greek row is Greek row. I don't even like Greek row. I didn't even like being in a sorority. But here's the thing: 
Unless you're currently in a frat house, you shouldn't be acting like one. And even if you are in a frat house, don't act like you're in one. Girls can't stand it. Just FYI. Goes on to say the union believes that the decreasing proportion of veteran controllers to new controllers will result in the overworking of veteran leaders. Really? Gee, there's a light bulb that just went on. It says incomplete training of many new controllers and the increased likelihood of a catastrophic mistake. Gee, whose fault is that? Hire some good people. Retire the older people. You know, they they need to retire, but there are so many people that are of retirement age that they they have a love of money and they won't leave the job. And then they have the nerve to complain about being overworked. Then don't do the job. Quit. Put in your two weeks. Retire. Give that job to somebody else. That's how it's supposed to be. It says both the U.S. Government Accountability Office and the National Transportation Safety Board have released reports signaling to the FAA that there are problems with the low numbers of controllers scheduling. and controller fatigue not surprised because it doesn't seem like a very good work environment which will affect the overall job performance of the controllers well duh if you overwork somebody of course there's going to be an issue the US GAO report to congressional headquarters on aviation and runway safety declared that it is not possible to make sufficient headway with the runway safety concerns quote until the human factors issues involving fatigue are addressed then address them these issues have probably been going on since at least the 1980s and they're just now writing a, a report about it in the 2000s see this is the slowest molasses way of functioning for the federal government it's pathetic It says the union believes that the fatigue is the result of the decreased number of air traffic controllers caused by the FAA's enforced policies. They then defer this concern to the National Transportation Safety Board, also known as NTSB, saying, quote, "Air controller fatigue continues to be a matter of concern for the NTSB." I would agree because they've investigated enough plane crashes to realize <coughs> people should not be operating when they are fatigued where their pilots or air traffic controllers i would think that would just be common sense i would think you wouldn't need a board or a safety report to know that as it is a safety concern the ntsb did release a safety recommendation to both the faa and the ntca the issued recommendation analyzed four controller faulted runway incursions basically wrecks where after investigation the respective air traffic controllers showed signs of fatigue i'm not surprised they should take more breaks the report said fatigue is known to degrade performance on cognitive tasks involving working memory and vigilance or vigilance excuse me well duh i mean they're not saying anything that the human race doesn't already know and that the mistakes made by the controllers in the investigated instances were consistent with signs of fatigue then give them a break rotate more shifts like that's what you normally do at a place of employment why aren't they doing it here makes no sense the board attributed this fact to both the shift work used at most facilities which often does not allow sufficient rest between shifts so they they don't have enough rest time whose fault is that that's management's fault and to increase amount of overtime work due to the decrease in controllers well if you overwork people and don't give them enough rest these are the kind of things that can happen i'm not surprised by this at all it's concerning but it's not surprising i mean i look at it this way even farmers give their animals rest and human beings are not beast of burden we're not oxen we're not cattle but yet compared to air traffic controllers farm animals get more rest and luxury than they do well whose fault is that that's management's fault whoever's making those decisions is is the problem this is why one of the biggest problems in the federal government I'll close with this one of the biggest problems within the federal government is they do not rotate managers 
It's a bureaucracy, so they keep the same bad people in the same position of power for too long, and then it destroys the team, and there's no camaraderie. And it becomes a very stressful work environment. No one deserves that. Air traffic controllers, I mean, they're just like surgeons in an ER. They already have a stressful job. It's not appropriate to make it worse or to not care. So needless to say... They definitely have their work cut out for them. I hope and pray that it gets better and that their workers get a very much better work environment because here's the thing, your work environment matters. It doesn't matter what kind of job you have, whether you work at a spa and have it easy or if you're an ER doctor or if you are an air traffic controller, stress is bad for any worker. And if the job is already naturally stressful, any additional stress just intensifies that work environment. And that's not right to do that. I mean, have we not seen enough OSHA regulations to figure this out? You know, where there's a will, there's a way to make things better. And it's high time the federal government and these agencies and these associations and labor unions, it's high time that they made this stuff better. There's no excuse for it, but it starts with management. It's not the new hires that are the problem. You can blame them all day and all night. What do, what do they know in terms of what's been going on? New hires were not and are not there for when the mistakes were made or when they were implemented with poor decision-making skills. That's a reflection of management. It's not a reflection of the new hires or the younger employees. It's a reflection of the people that do not retire. It's a reflection of management where they just kind of it's the good old boy system. I guarantee you most of the managers and higher-ups in the air traffic controller industry and in the FAA are mostly men, and that's probably why there's a problem. I love men, they can be awesome, but whenever you have an industry that is male dominated and you don't have equal employment or equal opportunity for men and women, It, it, it becomes a good old boy system. It becomes like a frat house. Even though they're not between the ages of 18 and 22, sometimes men revert back to that way of thinking when they're just around their buddies all the time. I don't know why they act like that, but that's sometimes what they do. If you don't have new innovations and new ideas in the workplace, then you're always going to be stuck in a rut. That is nothing new. but it does need to be handled and it needs to be handled efficiently and quickly because the workers deserve a better work environment in regards to this and more importantly the american people deserve safer flights it's a safety issue it's it, it is serious but it is it's easily it can be easily handled and you start from the top down that's what i would do i would start with the managers And those that are the powers that be, as they say, and just look and see, have they ever made a poor decision? Have they ever ignored the request of an employee? And if so, what was the request? Did they speak up about the hours that they're working, that they're working too much, there aren't enough breaks? If a manager doesn't acknowledge the fact that they're overworking their employees, it's the manager that's the problem and they need to be fired. Hands down, they need to be fired. It doesn't matter if they are an, a, a federal employee. It doesn't matter if they're in a union. It doesn't matter if they've been there 30, 40, 50 years. They deserve to be fired if they don't value the safety of the workplace. Because if the workplace is not, safety, is not safe, excuse me, then it makes it very difficult to provide that safety to, to your patrons, you know, to your customers, which in the case of the air traffic controllers, their patrons and their customers is anybody that has a passenger on a jet, which could be you or me. or our families. And I think that people would take that very seriously. But I will go ahead and end this podcast as usual until next time. I pray that you're happy, healthy and whole, that you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. God bless. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.